Hello, my name is Niall Murphy and I am the North American Manager of Service with Armstrong. Today I'd like to introduce you to Ben Watson, who is our pump assembler and tester. You are looking at an Armstrong Series 4300 split couple pipe mounted vertical inline pump. It's also known as a VIL. The unit being serviced in this video has 16 inch port sizes and is fitted with a 19 inch diameter impeller and a 300 horsepower 1200 RPM motor. The unit is rated for 7,000 gallons per minute at 130 feet of head. This pump size, termed as a 16 by 16 by 19, is also capable of operating at 1800 RPM and supplying system requirements of 12,000 gallons per minute at 270 feet of head. These conditions would require a 1,000 horsepower motor. All series 4300 VIL units are pipe mounted as illustrated in this video. We have the demonstration unit installed in a factory test loop with loosely supported piping and one can readily observe that there are no supports directly under the pump. This type of unit becomes an integral part of piping and typical installations need no pump supports or flexible connections to the piping. This is of great value to the system installer. Another unique value of the series 4300 pump is the ease at which such large pumps can be maintained. Mechanical seals are critical items on centrifugal pumps and typically require most maintenance. We will demonstrate in the next few minutes just how easy it is to service the mechanical seal on this large 16 inch 300 horsepower pumping unit. Here are the tools we're going to need today to repair the mechanical seal in this pump. We're going to need a flathead screwdriver, a 7 16 inch open wrench, a 5 8 inch open wrench, a 1 8 inch allen key, a 3 8 inch allen key, a 3 quarter inch open or ratchet wrench, a 15 16 inch open or ratchet wrench, a soft rubber mallet, a clean rag, lubrication for the shaft and seal, Typically, this is non-petroleum based product, like glycerin, as we are using in this case. In addition, we have the replacement Armstrong 2 and 5 8 inch mechanical seal. Make sure that the control panel is in the off position. In addition to that, it's recommended that the pump controller be locked out, as is using this method, with a key, with a lock, and a tag to prevent others from operating the pump while you're working on it. Now that we've disconnected the power, we must isolate the pump by closing the suction side of the pump and ensuring complete isolation. Ben is pointing to the drain plug. It's not necessary to remove this to change a mechanical seal. So Ben, the first thing we've got to do is release the water pressure from the casing. In order to do that, we open the air vent and leave it open until such a time as we have completely relieved all the pressure from the casing. All Armstrong couple pumps are fitted with effective coupling guards. Of course, they have to be removed in order to service the mechanical seal. They must be replaced immediately following such a repair. Ben is now removing the flush line. We're going to loosen off one of the set screws on the mechanical seal head. There are three of these. And then we'll rotate the shaft to the next one and loosen it off. And we'll do the third one.
So now what Ben is doing is he's actually lifting up the rotating element. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take the 3 8 inch Allen wrench and we're going to loosen off the Allen cap screws in the coupling. There's eight of those. Using the 3 quarter inch Allen wrench, we're going to loosen off the two cap screws on the jacking ring. And this will, in fact, help us lower the shaft. So you'll notice here that we're doing it alternately. So now we're going to completely remove the coupling cap screws. It's fairly easy, of course, when you've loosened them all off and uh, take them off in a few moments, really. This unique coupling design joins the pump and motor shafts. It incorporates a shaft locating jack ring. The shaft locating jack ring allows heavy rotating assemblies be lowered or raised easily during mechanical seal service. That's excellent. I got you. All right. Okay. We now need to separate the shaft locating jack ring by removing the two cap screws that hold it in place on the pump shaft. Now using a screwdriver, we're just going to pry them apart a little bit. And we may have to use a, the uh, mallet just to tap this off. Go ahead. Got you. Very good. Got it. Remove the shaft straight key. Slide the mechanical seal off the pump shaft and remove between the opening. Ben is now removing the Ford land plate cap screws. Similar to the mechanical seal head, the gland plate can be removed between the two shafts. Sometimes the seal seat will come with it. In this case, the seat remained in position and we'll remove it separately. Okay, we're going to take the replacement Armstrong seal out. And we're going to take it out very carefully. Oh, great. I'll put this a little cloth down here. We'll open up the, this must be the seat. Yes. Okay. And then we'll take the rotating element. Thanks, Ben. Nice brand new seal. And place it on the work area. I see. So what you're doing is you're placing the ceramic seat in the stuffing box and you're lining up the hole with the flush line of where the gland plate's going to be. So Ben's going to take the gland plate, place it between the two shafts and slide it very slowly and rest it right on top of the ceramic stationary seat. Thanks, Ben. Now it's time to reinstall those four gland plate cap screws. Tighten evenly and alternately. Be careful not to over tighten.
Using the glycerin lubricant, apply small amounts to the seal head o-ring. Apply similar amount of glycerin to the pump shaft. Take the new seal head and slide it carefully down the pump shaft, resting it on the seat. Now it's time to reinstall the shaft locating jack ring. At this stage, don't fully tighten the cap screws. So I'm taking the key, and I'm going to place the key in here now in the slot. We are now tightening the jack ring positioning screws. Ensure the coupling precision machine bore is clean of debris prior to reinstalling on the pump. Using the straight keyed side coupling nav, align the motor shaft collar and jack ring with the mating coupling grooves and simply snap into place. Ben is pointing at the gap between the jack ring and the rest of the coupling. Later we will be lifting the rotating assembly using the position locating jack ring. This gap will close. Next, snug the coupling bolts. We are now tightening the jack ring positioning screws. This easily raises the heavy rotating assembly into its designed position for free rotation. Ben is pointing out the even spacing between the coupling halves. Press the rotating seal head firmly against the seat and tighten all set screws. Remove the seal clips. The seal clips were in place to hold the seal at the design working length, but must be removed for proper seal operation. Reinstall the seal flush line and coupling guards.
good practice would suggest always to clean up the work area to complete the service. Now we are ready to return the pump to service. Let's open the suction and discharge pump valves. If you have removed the casing drain plug, be sure to reinstall it before flooding the pump. Evacuate air from the seal chamber by loosening the air vent on the seal flush line. Ensure air-free water flow is evident. To place the pump back in service, simply remove the lock, the tag, and the lockout, and place the pump back in service. Some operators are concerned that a pipe-mounted pump will kick the piping when activated. You will note that even the loosely held groove piping at the Armstrong test rig doesn't move when the pump operates. Obviously, welded or grooved piping supported correctly for commercial and industrial projects will move even less. In many regions, the days are gone where huge, out-of-date design base-mounted pumps are automatically installed in large systems. Split-coupled vertical inline pumps take less space, are easier to install, great to maintain, and are more reliable than base-mounted pumps by a whopping 148% in some studies. Combine this with the flexibility of installing large pumps directly in the pipe, and it's easy to understand why many system designers and operators are switching to this hard-to-beat design. We would like to thank Ben for his help in this demonstration. Thank you for taking the time to view this instructional video. I'm Niall Murphy. See you next time.